My life was torture. The beatings, the threats, the threats of my kids' lives had me in submission because I didn't want anything to happen to my children. I am really proud of how I treat all the girls who work for me. They're not so much staff, more like family. I could not believe my luck when Min decided to move here. Look, like most teenagers, she can be a bit moody, but that soon sorted out after I had a nice chat with her. Nikolai is a great worker. He's worth his weight in gold. When he first came over here, he had nowhere to stay. So I sorted him out with a really nice flat he shares with a couple of the other boys. Sometimes he talks about moving on to something else. So I just sit him down and tell him that if he wants to do that, I will be here to help. 40 million people around the world live in slavery. That's more than at the height of the transatlantic slave trade two centuries ago. It's thought that tens of thousands of them are here in the UK. They paint your nails, they wash your car, they pick your strawberries. Some are even forced to sell their bodies for sex. Men, women and children of all nationalities become enslaved. All it takes is the hope of a better life, a dream that is then pounced on by heartless criminals and turned into a nightmare. This is Miriam's story. I got married quite early at the age of 19. I was married to an alcoholic. I had kids quite early and the abuse started probably within the first two years of the marriage. On regular occasions, he would beat me, rape me, and on many occasions, he would do it in front of the kids. I was told that he owned me. The opportunity arose to come abroad, where I was befriended by someone who, unbeknownst to me, was actually affiliated with a human trafficking ring in the UK. I thought hard and long about it because it meant I had never been abroad, I'd never left my children, so it was a massive decision. And eventually I came to the UK, to a Christian family to work in Reading. And within the first week or so, I realised I had made a terrible mistake. The madame of the house informed me that she owned me. And the only time I'm allowed to leave is when she was ready to let me leave. I was meant to work seven days a week, 16 hours per day, no pay. I slept on the floor. I took care of three kids, a five bedroom house, cooked, washed, cleaned, iron, laundry, you name it, I had to do it. I would go to church with them. And it was weird that no one ever came to ask me anything or looked for any signs to realise that something wasn't right with this family. Miriam was surrounded week after week by people worshipping a God who wants true freedom for all. But they didn't recognise the signs or ask the right questions to help set Miriam free. The reality of knowing another human being was treating me less than a person. My dignity was stripped. I felt hopeless. I got trafficked, um, passed to other families. So I was passed to three families in total. And Home Office made a raid on my last family. And I think that was my saving grace. I still have flashbacks, but I still look forward to a new day because it means that they didn't win. They didn't. They tried to break me, but in the end I survived. Freedom is something that we take for granted. 
it's a gift of God, it's the purpose of God. Those who forcibly constrain, confine, traffic and enslave people will face the judgment of God for their terrible sin. Yet even more serious is when we choose not to see, when, as it were, we put on our own blindfolds. Because then we don't see those around us who are held in slavery, oppressed, trafficked in other people's powers. The detailed knowledge that churches and other faith groups have of their local communities puts them on the front line in the fight against modern slavery. The Clua initiative will galvanise the church's response to detect slavery and to provide care and support for the survivors. There are slaves in your city, your town, perhaps even your village. Pledge with us to say, we see you. We see you. We see you. We see you. We see you.